In this video, we're going to talk about the inductive effect. So looking at these two molecules, which one is more acidic? Which one has a lower pKa value? Is it acetic acid on the left or fluoroacetic acid on the right? The pKa for acetic acid is around 4.75. When you add the fluorine to it, this hydroxyl group becomes more acidic. The pKa of that hydrogen is 2.7. And this is due to the inductive effect. Fluorine is an electronegative atom. It really wants electrons, and so it pulls electrons toward itself. This inductive effect of fluorine, its ability to pull electrons through the sigma bond, causes this acid to become more acidic. And the reason has to do with the stabilization of the conjugate base. So if we draw the conjugate base, we can better see the effect that fluorine has on this ion. So fluorine, being an electron withdrawing group, is going to pull electron density away from the system toward itself. As a result, the oxygen with the negative charge, it loses some of that negativity. Fluorine has the effect of making the, the negative charge less negative, closer to neutral. As a result, because the oxygen loses some of its negative charge, it becomes more stable. So if we were to compare acetate and this particular base, acetate would be the stronger base, this would be the weaker base. If this is the weaker base, that means that this is the stronger conjugate acid, this is the weaker conjugate acid. So that's the basic idea behind the inductive effect. Whenever you add an electron withdrawn group, it will make the acid stronger, more acidic. It'll decrease the pKa. And it does this by stabilizing the conjugate base. It makes the base less negative, so to speak. Now, let's consider some other examples. Which of these two molecules would you say is more acidic? Chloral acetic acid or fluoral acetic acid? So while you think about that, I'm going to write up another problem. So we're going to compare 2-bromopentanoic acid with 3-bromopentanoic acid. So looking at the example on top, we're comparing chlorine and fluorine. Which one is the better electron withdrawing group? So in group 7A or group 17 of the periodic table, we have fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Electronegativity increases towards fluorine. So what that means is that fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine. On the electronegativity scale, fluorine has a value of 4.0. For chlorine, it's 3.0. So because fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine, we expect that this compound is going to be the stronger acid. It's going to be more acidic. And the pKa for fluoroacetic acid is 2.7. For chloroacetic acid is 2.9. So adding a stronger electron withdrawn group will make the acid more acidic rather than adding a weaker electron withdrawn group. But nevertheless, both of these halogens do exert a, a significant effect on acetic acid. Keep in mind, the pKa of just a normal acetic acid molecule is about 4.75. So this chlorine still had a major effect on its pKa. Now, what about looking at 2-bromopentanoic acid with 3-bromopentanoic acid? Which one is going to be more acidic? 
Well, we can clearly tell that the one that's closer to the acidic proton is going to be, it's going to create a more acidic molecule. So that's going to be 2-bromopentanoic acid. The inductive effect is not as great when the electron withdrawing group is far from the functional group that we're considering. If it's three carbons apart, the effect is not really noticeable. So keep in mind, the pKa of a typical carboxylic acid is between four to five. For this one, it's around 3.0. For this molecule, it's about 4.0. So we can see there's a huge difference in moving the electron withdrawing group one carbon away from the carboxylic acid functional group. The pKa increased by a factor of one. So this is going to be the stronger acid. Putting the electron withdrawing group closer to the functional group or the, the acidic functional group will make the acid a lot more stronger. Now let's look at another example. Let's compare these two. Which one would you say is more acidic? If we were to draw this out, it would look like this. We have three fluorine atoms on this carbon. We know the pKa of fluoroacetic acid is around 2.7. Now for trifluoroacetic acid, it's between 0 to negative 1. So it is very acidic. It's in the strong acid category. So the number of electron withdrawn groups also play a role in affecting the pKa of the acid. So far, we've considered three factors. Number one, the type of electron withdrawn group. Having a fluorine atom versus a chlorine atom will make the acid more acidic. The second thing we look at was the proximity of the electron withdrawn group to the acidic functional group. The closer the electron withdrawn group is to the acidic functional group, the more acidic that proton is going to be. And finally, the number of electron withdrawn groups. Here we have three electron withdrawn groups. Here we only have one. So having more electron withdrawn groups on an acid will make the acid even more acidic. So those are the three factors that you need to be aware of when considering the effect of an electron withdrawn group on an acid. So anytime you have an inductive effect problem, pay attention to those three factors. The type of EWG, how many EWGs you have, and the proximity of the EWG to the acidic functional group. Now, for those of you who want to access my extended organic chemistry videos, you can access it at my Patreon membership program at patreon.com slash mathsciencetutor or in my YouTube membership program, which you can join in the video uh, below. Now, if we click on this organic chemistry post, it'll show you all my full-length organic chemistry videos. So I have this video on pKa values for those of you who are studying acids and bases. For those of you who are just studying organic chemistry, this basic introduction video will really help you get started. And I have some other videos as well, hybridization, resonance structures. The free version of this video is about 20 minutes long on YouTube, but the full-length version is about an hour long. Acids and bases, functional groups, Newman projections. The worksheet contains all of the problems in the full length video. Some of you have asked for worksheets. You prefer to work through the problems that way instead of you know watching a long video. So I have it for not all of my videos, but some of them. So we have chair confirmations. Now, for my organic chemistry exam one video, you may have to type it in in the search box to get it. Or if you look at the description section of the referring video, it'll take you directly to that link. But here is the worksheet. Now, if you want to watch a seven hour video, 
you can do it that way but if you if you prefer to print out the worksheet and work through the problems that way um, you could do that as well by the way post a comment in below this video I want to know what your thoughts are do you prefer to watch the seven hour video or do you prefer to study for the exam by getting a printout of the worksheet and working through the problems while you're in school let me know in the comment section below now I have other videos stereochemistry specific rotation SM1 SM2 reactions uh, there's a practice test on that 77 practice problems so here's the video with the practice test but I haven't done the worksheet yet we got alkene reactions alkyne reactions alcohol reactions radical reactions and then my organic chemistry one final exam review video so the video is actually finished but the worksheet is coming soon so let me know for those of you who are actually interested in getting these worksheets do you prefer to watch a six hour final exam review video or do you prefer to have a printout of the 100 practice problems and work through it at school let me know in the comment section below